Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless luke 21 26 through 28 men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of the heavens will be shaken then they will see the son of man coming in a cloud with power and great glory now when these things begin to happen look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws near luke 12 54 through 56 then he also said to the multitudes whenever you see a cloud rising out of the west immediately you say a shower is coming and so it is and when you see the south wind blow you say there will be hot weather and there is hypocrites you can discern the face of the sky and of the earth but how is it you do not discern this time jesus was rebuking the multitudes for not recognizing the times they were living in jesus the promised Messiah was standing right there before them, and they didn't even know it. If the multitudes of Jesus' day missed Jesus' first coming, how much more important is it for us today to discern the times we live in and make sure we don't miss the signs of his second coming? Are you discerning the times? Luke 21:25. And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. One of the many signs we are living in the last days right before the return of Jesus Christ is nations will be in a state of perplexity or uncertainty over what to do in a difficult situation. This is exactly what is happening in our world today. Eight soldiers have been killed in an attack by armed men in northwest Pakistan. Ten fighters were also killed in the gun battle. The fighting began on Monday after a suicide bomber drove a vehicle with explosives into a military enclave in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province. Gunmen then stormed the premises, leading to that gun battle that lasted for 26 hours. Well, Pakistan's seen an intensified wave of attacks against its security forces and Chinese engineers working in the country. The instability has rattled foreign investors and allies who say the government needs to tighten security. These fears are putting a multi-billion dollar development project with China at risk. This is the latest video from Tariq Taliban, Pakistan. Warning of intensified attacks. The footage appears to show a police convoy being ambushed. The armed group is increasingly targeting Pakistani security forces and Chinese nationals, many of whom are engineers working on major projects as part of the China-Pakistan economic corridor. Foreign investors and Chinese government are calling for more protection for the workers. This has become a weekly affair, and it's not letting up. Young people who have been protesting against the government say enough is enough. Police had a hard time managing the protests. Daniel Wambua never flinched even as police fired tear gas at him and other protesters. We are out here trying to fight for our own rights, you know. Um, a student, where do I go from there? All these young people you see here are walking around depressed because there is no hope in this country. People first came to the streets to protest against a proposal to raise taxes. The contentious finance bill was withdrawn. But many say they want the government and President William Ruto to deal with bad governance, corruption, mismanagement of public funds and to step down. But this is a situation on the street. The police in turns appear overwhelmed. Uh, they are using tear gas, but some of the protesters are also using stones. And you know, they are not afraid. So they're saying that they are going to stay here until their demands are met. The protests are not just happening in Nairobi. Demonstrations happened in 23 out of 47 counties across the country. In Kisumu, in Western Kenya, protesters said they wanted the electoral commissioners reappointed since their mandate 
ended last election. We want the IBC to be formed quickly, as quick as possible, so that these MPs that are taking the Kenyans' money for granted, they should be recalled back according to the Constitution. Since the start of protests, President Ruto has yielded to some demands. But scenes like this are not making things easier. This is Kitengela on the outskirts of Nairobi. Police killed a protester here and a journalist was also shot in another town. Nearly 50 people have been killed and many others injured since the unrest began weeks ago. The president has been under a lot of pressure to deal with the situation, but the anger on the streets can be felt by many Kenyans who say they resonate with the young protesters. The army is on high alert in the mountains of Indian-administered Kashmir. Four Indian soldiers were killed in the latest attack targeting a foot patrol in this decades-long contested Himalayan region. The soldiers were ambushed by rebels fighting against Indian rule in the forests of Dodar district late on Monday. Since 1947, India and Pakistan have fought two wars for the Muslim-majority territory, which both countries claim in full, but control in part. Armed resistance to Indian rule began in 1989. Thousands of people have been killed since then, but the violence had subsided in recent years. There are fears that may now be changing. Previous attacks had focused mostly on Kashmir. The authorities say the epicenter of violence has now shifted to the Jammu region. In the regional capital, Srinagar, protesters burned an effigy of Pakistan's Prime Minister, Shahbaz Sharif. India blames Pakistan for training, funding and pushing armed groups across a ceasefire line into the part of Kashmir under Delhi's control. Pakistan denies this. Renewed tension and killing across the region. A permanent political solution remains elusive at best. Student protests in Bangladesh have turned violent with at least six people killed and dozens injured in fighting between rival groups and police calling for an end to what they say are discriminatory quotas for public service jobs. They say it favours supporters of the ruling party. Student protesting from the Dhaka Medical University. We're on the outskirts of the Dhaka University campus. Now the protest is going on near the Language Martyrs Memorial. A large number of students have gathered here. There's also students gathered in many parts of the city in different intersections. They're not staying very long but protesting and then leaving the area. There's been reports of violence in different parts of the country. I feel that as a student, we should all take part in these protests. We are taking a risk, and all violence against protesters must stop immediately. We will continue the movement, and now we have new demands. Aside from the abolishment of the quota system, we also want the withdrawal of comment by Sheikh Hasina and stopping all violence against us. The students are saying they'll continue to protest. They're here to protest against the quota as well as the government's heavy-handed tactics and the pro-government elements attacking them and the Dhaka University campus and other campuses across the country which resulted in hundreds of injuries across the country. They say they'll continue to protest unless their demands are met and they want justice as well for what happened yesterday in the Dhaka University campus and other parts of the country. Opposition supporters in Albania have staged a protest in the capital Tirana demanding Prime Minister Edi Rama step down. They accuse Rama, who's been in power since 2012, of corruption. They also demanded the release of opposition leader Sali Berisha, who's been held under house arrest on corruption charges since last year in a move many say is politically motivated. Protesters pelted a government building in the mayor's office with petrol bombs. Is global chaos the new normal? As anyone can plainly see, the world is in a state of decay, moral, economic, political, every way possible. People are saying the world is out of control and looking for someone, anyone, to rescue the planet. Soon, very soon, a leader will appear on the horizon that appears to have all the answers to calm the oceans, to bring peace to all the nations. His title will be the Antichrist, and he will be welcomed by millions of those on earth not taken with the rapture. Unfortunately, his true identity will be known soon to those left behind 
that his true intentions are death, destruction, and control. So yes, global chaos is the new normal. Until the Lord Jesus Christ comes at the end of the Antichrist's seven-year reign of terror and establishes true peace on earth, it seems like a good time for Satan to present the lawless one to the world. 2 Thessalonians 2, 7-12 For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion, that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Turning left instead of right. The election results in England and France surprised political observers when voters embraced parties on the left rather than more conservative ones. Well, here to explain why it happened and what it may mean for the future is Leighton Gray. He's senior fellow of Canada's Frontiers Center for Public Policy and host of the Gray Matter podcast. Leighton, surprisingly, both England and France have made an unexpected turn to the left. Why? Well, it's a great question. I think the short answer is that the left is getting very good at winning elections. And this is something that uh, those of us who are on the other side of the case need to be very aware of. Of course, we've seen the situation in the United States in 2020. There's still a great shroud of uncertainty and speculation, suspicion around the results of that election. We've had the last two elections in Canada in 2019 and 2021, where we know that the CCP was interfering in our national elections. And we see now over in Europe, uh, kind of living out what, uh, what John Calvin once said, and that is that when God wants to judge uh, a nation, he gives them wicked rulers. But there's features of what's going on in France that I think will be very familiar to Americans. For example, um, this, pro this idea of a protracted election. Um, we had Ms. Le Pen. It looked like she was going to win a victory. Even now, the French are stuck with the government that, uh, by most reports, about 70 percent of the French do not support. But we have this protracted election where it looked like she was going to win. We have rioting in the streets. This leftist coalition reorganizes itself under the direction of Mr. Macron, who we know is is uh, is, is under the direction of, of the globalists. And lo and behold, Old, much like in 2020 when 600,000 votes showed up for Mr. Biden overnight when it looked like Mr. Trump was going to win, we have the turning to the left. And then the other thing that's really concerning about the French election, which just came out on Tuesday, is they're taking a page out of the Democrats' book in terms of lawfare. It seems that uh, Ms. Le Pen now is going to be subjected to a preliminary investigation into suspicions of illicit financing. Uh, and they're calling her a far-right French leader. Of course, she's nothing of the kind. She's a conservative. But this this is over some financing implications, uh, allegations from 2022. And she's not the only one in France who's going to be subjected to this sort of lawfare. So not only is the left sort of stolen an election in France, and the people are stuck with the government that they don't want, now they're going to take out their political opponents by trumping up these, pardon the pun, <laughs> by trumping up these allegations. And then when you look at what's happening in England, uh, you have there, uh, you know, a government that strangely wins a record majority of seats in their House of Commons, uh, two thirds of them, in fact, but with only one third of the popular vote. Well, how does how does this happen? We, we wonder at this. Uh, and the British people are wondering aloud about this, too. So how are the how is the left able to do this? How is it that they become so adept at winning elections? Because they're winning a lot. And of course, the biggest one is coming up in November in the United States, because anyone who understands what's going on in the world should know and appreciate that it's the broad shoulders of the United States. It's sort of the bulwark that's holding back uh, this tide of, of communism and globalism. Uh, Trump and, and, you know, that Project 2025 
I see as the not only the American but the global solution, the the global answer to globalism, if you will, leftism, that's sort of overrun Europe and is largely taken over Canada. If the Democrats are able to to uh, you know to repeat their success of 2020, and this may be why Mr. Biden seems to be so confident, even though his numbers are so low and he's had such a horrific uh, uh, you know, uh, you know a, a performance in the recent um, in the recent uh, debates with Mr. Trump, that may be why he's so confident that they're going to win. I don't know, but the one thing that we all need to be concerned about is how the heck did these people get so good at winning elections? The New World Order is a group of elitist people bent on ruling the world through a single worldwide system of government. The appeal of this New World Order lies in its proposal to free the world of wars and political strife, and its promise to eradicate poverty, disease, and hunger. Its purpose is to meet the needs and hopes of all mankind through worldwide peace. This New World Order will supposedly do away with the need for diverse world governments. This will be accomplished by the installation of a one-world political system. The New World Order will emphasize tolerance through the promotion and acceptance of other cultures and their values and ideologies. Its ultimate goal is a sense of unity and oneness with all people. Other objectives include the use of a single worldwide currency as well as oneness in politics, religion, and moral values. The New World Order will promise worldwide peace, the absence of war, and the elimination of all political unrest. The problem with the acceptance and approval of any new world order is that no government has ever offered, nor will it ever offer, real hope and peace for mankind. Those who desire the ushering in of a new world order are in for a rude awakening. Only heaven brings lasting peace and happiness. The Bible makes it very clear that all things associated with his life on earth, with its sufferings, its decay, its discontent, and death, will continue with this physical life as we read in 2 Corinthians 4.16. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. Although our physical bodies are growing older and we notice that our outer man is progressively decaying and wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day after day. The new life we received at salvation is being transformed into the image and likeness of Christ as we mature in the faith, grow in grace, and gain a more intimate knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There is nothing more essential to the world than the gospel of Jesus Christ. In 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4, Paul declares what the gospel is and how important it is to embrace it and share it with others. He reminds the Corinthians of the gospel he preached among them, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, that Christ is coming back for his church someday in the rapture according to the scriptures, as we read in 1 Corinthians 15, 51-55. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed for this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? Jesus promised his followers he was going to go and prepare a place for them in his Father's house, where there are many mansions, as we read in John 14, 1-3. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. This is the essence of the gospel, the pure gospel of Jesus Christ, his death on the cross for sinners, his resurrection to everlasting life, and his coming back someday is central to our Christian faith. 1 Corinthians 1.18 For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. It is the hope of heaven we need, not the false hope of a new world order, as the world is not our home, 
as we read in Philippians 3.20, for our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 24, verse 42, watch therefore, for you do not know the hour your Lord is coming. I want you to know, church, that Jesus Christ could come this month, or he might come next week, or he could even come... Don't get left behind. Call upon the name of Jesus today. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with Him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in Him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning. My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready! Get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.